Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, my name is Jordan, also known as J Monster, and today we're going to be looking at the Gondolin faction and what you can bring for a legal Gondolin army. We did go over this a little bit, I think, in the first video where we took a, a brief look at Gondolin, but I will show you the tier breakdown for them so that you know what you can bring and in what proportion you can bring them. Uh, nothing particularly interesting here with Gondolin, there are no exceptions to them. Uh, their mid-tier roster consists of the Scouts of the Tree, Spearman of the Swallow, and the Guardsmen of the Harp. And you can mix and match these up to a total of 12. So whatever you want that to be. Let's take five of them, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's what we did last time. Nice, well-rounded. Uh, and from there, you can pick up to six high-tier units. Now, for Gondolin, this is a little bit more interesting um, because you're going to lean very heavily on your mid-tiers, and then you're going to hyper-specialize, I think, uh, in terms of your high tier units. So you can bring six in total, and the high tier units consist of the Gallants of the Wing, Shield Bearers of the Tower, Axemen of the Pillar, Armorers of the Hammer, uh, the Marksmen of the Heavenly, Ar Heavenly Arch, Champions of the Fountain, and the Knights of the Golden Flower. So six slots to fill out. You could bring six Knights of the Golden Flower. You could bring six Champions of the Fountain if you wanted. Or you can bring, you know, some mix thereof. Whatever it is that you feel that you're going to need. And then you're going to move on to your bodyguard tier. So we've got the Chains of the King and the Lords of the Golden Flower. And these are the only units which can contain your general. And by bodyguard tier, I mean, I guess it is a little bit confusing because your bodyguard tier units need to be your general, but they also encompass units that aren't necessarily a traditional general's bodyguard, but just a very high tier elite unit. Um, but in this case, there's no confusion with that. These are both General's Bodyguards. The best pick, I think, for Gondolin is to stick them into the Retainers of the King. You can give them up to 13 armor, makes them hella tanky, and then you can use your Lords of the Golden Flower more offensively. But you can mix and match these as well. You can bring, you know, double Retainers of the King if that's what you want to. And you can bring double Lords of the Golden Flower if that's what you wanted to do. So maybe you wanted to make, like, a crazy Rush Army or something. Um, so you could bring six units of Champions of the Fountain. And then you can pop a couple Lords of the Golden Flower in there as well. Um, on top of that, you can then give yourself a bunch of Spearmen of the Swallow, possibly to defend your approach. Let's see, you've got six there, and you've got some Scouts of the Tree. That's a potentially viable Gondolin army right there with a lot of close range punch, a little bit of longer range support, and also some defense for your flanks and anti-cavalry. And then, of course, you've got a whole bunch of Slingers of the Tree who are an absolute nightmare when brought in in huge numbers. So I think we'll see a lot of Scouts of the Tree, probably. Mm. Well, they do have some very distinct uh, disadvantages as well. They've only got about 130 range. So they are outranged by most bowmen, in fact, all bowmen in the game. So they can be picked apart, that sort of thing. So this does have some weaknesses to it. It's not sort of a catch-all army. Uh, there's also a decent amount of anti-elephant, but there's not a ton of uh, anti-armor in here. Not any strong anti-armor anyways. Uh, Scouts of the Tree do have uh, maces. So in close quarters, they're going to have, with an, armor, or with an attack upgrade, about nine or so damage. Um, but their missiles only do one damage, so you're not going to be taking out a whole bunch of uh, heavily armored uh, foes with them, not very quickly in any case. And it does lack mobility entirely. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of factions out there that could exploit this utter lack of cavalry. Uh, and that could be potentially very scary. So, yeah, it's not a catch-all doomstack army, but it is a little bit specialized. And then if you're going to be doing some heavy fighting in a city, for example, maybe you're going to want some units that are a little bit more reliable. Go with your down to the wing. They're great at slogging it out in close quarters. Um, let's see, your opponents have a lot of armor. You can bring yourself four units of armors of the hammer. So you've got two bodyguard, six high tier, and from there on out, we'll fill it in with scouts. Uh, give ourselves some spearmen of the swallow, so we have some range capabilities. And we can give ourselves some Guardsmen of the Heart with some Chevrons. A little bit of a nice little workhorse unit here, lots of mid-tier bodies to throw at stuff, and then you've got your Specialists 
and your uh, your really really high end sword units. So this one pretty well rounded. It's got some good anti armor. It's got a lot of units, you know, especially the gowns of the wing with their 15 uh, melee defense, who can slog it out in close quarters for a while, and then enough bodies, of course, to uh, to mix in with these other high tier units so they do not get overwhelmed by their lack of numbers. So that's going to do for Gondolin. Hope you guys have a better understanding of the Gondolin faction and what can be brought into each army. Um, and again, just because I didn't mention it in this video, but I did mention it in the last two, your ballistas, trebuchets, catapults, artillery generally, uh, they fit into a mid-tier slot. You can bring a max two of them from that army. So we could have dropped, say, um, a couple of Guardsmen of the Harp and brought some combination of two ballistas or one ballista, one trebuchet, or one ballista, one catapult, etc., etc., to a, uh, the siege as well. I probably would have brought the two trebuchets and then maybe got rid of a uh, couple of, of spearmen and just went right for the uh, the uh, like melee approach or something like that. Or maybe I could have got rid of the scouts. They would have been a little bit more of a liability there, and then I'd have a uh, really nicely well-rounded force. It's it's really down to you and what you what it is that you're fighting. So if you're sieging out the Easterlings, they don't generally have a ton of of bow units. They have one legendary company that they can bring. Again, it's capped at one like everything else. And they've got some horse archers and things like that. So you're not going to have to worry about needing bowmen as much in order to pressure people out of certain areas. Um, so you could maybe, you know, replace the two bowmen with the trebuchets or get one trebuchet and one catapults or whatever it, it really, really the situation calls for. But in any case, my name is Jordan, also known as J Monster. Hope you guys are enjoying this so far. And next time we will be looking at Doriath. I'll see you guys then.